Warning, the Not Real Art Podcast is intended for creative audiences only. The Not Real Art Podcast celebrates creativity and creative culture worldwide. It contains material that is fresh, fun and inspiring and is not suitable for boring old art snobs. Now, let's get started and enjoy the show. Greetings and salutations, my creative brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Not Real Art Podcast. I am Sourdough here with you, and today's going to be different. I'm going to experiment today with a few ideas that I've been thinking about. We don't have a guest. Man One is on assignment still, and I've been thinking about different ways to change up the podcast. How do we you know, add value? How do we bring more interesting stories and news? Do we need to spin off a different kind of podcast? So I've just been thinking about all these things and I've been, I bought some new toys, some recording devices, some things that I want to test out. And, you know, quite honestly, I don't really like the idea of me just sitting here and talking with no guests. I much prefer to have a guest to talk to. I'd rather hear them talk than listen to me talk. And I know you would too, (laughs) but I don't know. I just thought I would try to experiment a little bit with this one. I looked up the other day and realized that Tuesday's show, we didn't have a guest booked. And rather than trying to scramble and find one, I would start testing out some of these ideas and some of these toys. I mean, so for example, I bought this really cool road class a soundboard that allows me to plug in my phone and do live call-ins and all kinds of things so for example like i was able to hook up my phone through bluetooth so that we can play music now live on the show which is like really cool it's super easy so for example i've just really been into John Coltrane's Giant Steps lately. Been listening to the song a lot. And so, for example, I can share with you now, which before was a pain in the ass to do, but now with this fancy new board, which by the way, it wasn't even that expensive. I think it was like three or four hundred bucks. And now I can share this song with you. So check this out. How great is that, right? Fucking Coltrane, man. Giant steps, baby. Here we go. I mean, come on. Yeah, there you go. So you get the idea, right? I mean, how cool is that? Just, you know, hook up my phone via Bluetooth to this thing. And now I can share this music. And it's like a multi-channel board. And by the way, it has sound effects too. Check this out. Fake applause. (laughs) It's kind of goofy, right? How about this one? What's this one? I'm still learning. I don't know what these are. So let's just press it and find out. It's like roulette here. Hold on. Oh, hey, rim shot. Got to have a rim shot. You know, my sense of humor, rim shots are perfect emphasis. See? Aw, nature. All right. Well, enough of that. Let's see what this one is. Ah, fake laughter. Canned laughter. Oh, boy. So I can... Uh, <laughs> I can manufacture laughter when I'm not being funny. Like, that's so good. And then people can applause. Oh, wait, that's the wrong button. 
I need to label these buttons so I know what I'm what I'm doing here. What's this one? Blue one here. They're all color coded. Like one's red, one's orange, one's blue, one's purple. Here we go. Ah, mysteries. Okay, let's. And this is a hot pink button here. Let's see what this is. Ooh, the harp, angelic harp. Wow. All right. So anyway, <laughs> lots of annoying fake sound effects to play with on this thing. And, you know, we'll see, man. I mean, we'll see. It's new toys trying to, I don't know, sex things up a bit, make them a little more interesting, make recording easier. I mean, you know, I've, I've you know, always wanted to do, for example, call in conversations. People can phone in and talk. And I haven't been able to do that. Apparently now with this board, we can do cool stuff like that. So that's that's great. You know, one of the reasons I've been wanting to experiment like this is because I thought it'd be fun to try to figure out how we, you know, bring more news and more kind of current events that are happening. I mean, part of the challenge is that our show is usually recorded, you know, weeks in advance. And, you know, if I'm talking about news, by the time some some of these episodes air, it's, you know, two, three, four weeks old. And that's not cool. And so the notion that we would be covering current events doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless we have like a daily show or something like this. Or in this case, you know, I'm recording the show on Wednesday, the 10th, February 10th. Holy shit. Valentine's Day is coming up. What am I going to do? Oh, man, my lady is she deserves so much more than me. And yet I haven't even <laughs> get with it to figure out what I'm doing to do on Valentine's Day. Anyway, February 10th. So the the episode is going to drop, as they always do, on Tuesday the 16th. And so, you know, I'm just talking about a few days here that we've got. So, you know, it makes sense to talk about some events and news and, you know, happenings today because, you know, it'll air on Tuesday and that's not too bad. So. You know, the the approach to recording these things will have to be different if I'm going to try to cover current events on some level. And by the way, current events in the art world, current events in the creative economy, current events in creative culture. We're all sick of hearing about politics and pandemics and social injustice and what have you. I mean, these are important issues, but this is not a political show necessarily. We'll get into some of that, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to sort of cover the news in our business, you know, the world of arts, the world of creative arts. And, you know, talking about some, you know, interesting stuff happening in our world would kind of be a fun thing to try to figure out how to do in a podcast. Maybe we'll do this once a week, you know, maybe a shorter show too. So our original show is an interview based show that's usually about an hour, hour and a half tops. Something like this could be 20, 30 minutes. It doesn't have to be, maybe be shorter, maybe 15 minutes. Something kind of a quick hit, you know, dropping the daily news, you know, and bite-sized morsels, you know. But there's a lot going on. I mean, there's a lot to talk about. You know, I was on the interwebs, you know, looking for all the hot news. I realized that we actually have a lot going on here at Not Real Art. And, you know, probably should share that with you first and you know fuck these other guys who are doing stuff like we should talk about our own shit first right toot our own horn who's gonna do it if we don't so anyway lots to lots to cover both internally and externally both inside and outside in terms of not real art there's been some some groovy things happening i hope you guys have been paying attention but if you you might have heard from previous podcasts that March is International Women's Month. And, uh, you know, we're going to try to celebrate it in a pretty cool way. I mean, I, again, I, I'm, I'm always thinking about how to change up the show and how to try to how to make it better. And hopefully you feel that. Hopefully you see that. Hopefully that's your experience. But one of the things that hold on here, I'm having technical difficulties. My fucking headphone cord is so long that it got wrapped up. Uh, <laughs> we, we are human here and we make mistakes and I felt like it'd be kind of fun just to sort of let it all hang out today and not uh, polish the, the turd too much. Anyway, March international women's month, Aaron Yoshi, our friend, our great friend who is also an incredible artist and just super awesome human being, super smart. The only artist I know to have an MBA, 
you know, artists always get a bad rap for not doing shit about business, but not Erin Yoshi. She has her master's of business administration. She has her MBA and then she's learned art. So she's a real dumb, dumb, clearly. And I joke, I kid, of course, Erin uh, Yoshi is, <laughs> is super dope and super smart. And we are so grateful that she's going to take the podcast over in March. And so this was one of those ideas that I was thinking like, well, how do we do interesting things and change it up and add some creativity to the show? And, you know, I don't always have to do this. I don't always have to be the one on the mic. There are people that are far more interesting than me and smarter than me to take this mic over and do what they do. And so when I had the idea to have Aaron take over the show in March, I was so grateful that she, you know, offered to do it because of course it's a lot of time. It's a lot of energy. She's busy. She's a mom in addition to, you know, a full-time artist and entrepreneur. You know, I was grateful for her to say yes, because it's a lot of time. You know, she had to book the guests, she had to do the interviews. You know, I'm sort of helping her and kind of some a little bit of the pre-production and certainly in the post-production. But, you know, she's been doing all this heavy lifting, talking to all these amazing artists, Judy Baca being one of them. I mean, I don't have the full list of all of the women that she's going to have on, but you know, just Judy Baca alone. I mean, having her in March is going to be fantastic. And, you know, so anyway, when, when I realized it was International Women's Month and, you know, we want to do something special, well, you know, <laughs> we don't want to mansplain here. I don't, I don't want to be the guy talking about, you know, International Women's Month. I thought it would be much better to have a woman talking about International Women's Month and talking with women about their role in the arts and the power of women in the arts and the power of women in the world. Because of course, those of us who really know what's up know that women rule the world. My wife loves when I say that, of course, because she knows it to be true. Kidding aside, though, I wanted Erin to run the show in March. She's so articulate. She's so smart. And I knew that she would just kill it on the mic here talking to these women. And so... Aaron Yo, she's I mean, she's she's coming on strong. She's gonna have some some great guests and some great conversations. And, you know, that's the Not Real Art Podcast in March. I mean, she's just taking it over. I think she's even dropping like eight episodes. So typically we do four a month. And uh, I think she ended up doing like, you know, eight different interviews. I could be wrong, but you know, at least between like six and eight. So it's, you know, bonus content in March. But wait, there's more. In March, bonus content uh, as Aaron Yoshi celebrates International Women's Month with these amazing women. And uh, I think I'm going to have Aaron on the show in a week to pump it up and she can tell you all the guests she has coming up in March. And I'll, I'll talk to her about the show. So you'll hear from her later this month as we go into March to talk about what she's got planned for you guys. So, you know, I'm just super grateful about that. In other news, those of you who have heard about our artist grant, you know, in 2019, we started it. We awarded a thousand bucks to 12 artists. In 2020, we changed it up a bit. We decided to, to award 2000 bucks to six artists. And we're going to do the same in 2021. Our 2021 Not Real Art grant for artists is now live on the website. So if you want to throw your hat in the ring and try to win this grant, Go to notrealart.com and sign up now for the 2021 grant with a chance to receive 2000 bucks for your arts practice and arts career. No strings attached with the grant, but as you guys may know, we don't just give you the money and walk away. We try to give you a platform. We have you come on the podcast as a guest. We produce a exhibition for you guys for the winners and 2020, we had to mix it up. 2019, we had a proper art gallery exhibition held at Art Share LA in downtown LA. With COVID in 2020, we had to change it up a bit and we moved everything online and we ended up having our first 3D virtual art exhibition, which by the way, is still hanging. You can go to notrealart.com, click on exhibitions or click on the grant tab and find your way into the virtual exhibition featuring our amazing 2020 grant recipients. And so we're doing it again in 2021. You could win. So you better get online there and get busy filling out the app and submitting your work because I think the deadline, 
well, it's either going to be April 1 or May 1. I, I got to figure this shit out <laughs> because we want to announce the winners in June. So that means that we'll be doing our judging and assessment selection in May. And uh, that means that we certainly have to have the submissions closed by May 1. So, but we may say April 1st. Let's just say April 1st. That way you guys get off your asses and get in there and, and stop procrastinating and submit. So, yeah. So the deadline is April 1st. <laughs> and you need to, if you want the chance to receive the grant, you can't win if you don't play. So you've got to go and go to notrelart.com, click on grant, follow the prompts, fill out the application for the grant, and maybe you'll receive the grant. I tell you what, the judging is always hard. I mean, we always get an incredible amount of compelling submissions, and you know, it's so hard to choose sometimes you know, who the grant recipient should be. Of course, our judges are, are fantastic professional creative professionals in the arts, so they, they know what they're doing. But you know, it's also not even just about the quality of the work. Obviously, the quality of the work has got to be great, but you know, we're also reading the submissions and we're trying to get an assessment of professionalism and attitude and energy, and we want positive energy. So I think, you know, it's safe to say that if, if we get the sense that an applicant isn't professional or isn't a decent human being or whatever. And again, this is a dangerous ter territory. We are judging. Yes, it, it is, might be subjective. It's a slippery slope. We know it's dangerous work, but, you know, we do our best to, you know, find grant recipients that live up to our values, which here at Not Real Art is not just rooted in world-class creativity and creative thinking and originality and strong voice and strong point of view and all that good stuff. But it's not just about talent. It, it's about attitude and character and values. And, you know, we, we want to award our grants to artists, creatives that we feel are truly professional people who share our values and our values being, you know, those of inclusivity egalitarian values of inclusivity and humility. I think you guys know we have a try to have a sense of humor around here about what we do. We love what we do. We love art. Art's a powerful, important, essential, vital, fundamental part of the human experience. You know, we're not fighting fires or we're not saving lives necessarily. We're feeding the soul, no doubt, which is critical. But we try to have a sense of humor about it. You know, we there's enough pretentious assholes in the art world. There's enough snobs in the art world. We're not trying to be that. In fact, we're trying to be the fun-friendly alternative to that. So, you know, we want to find those artists that also have, if possible, a sense of humor and, and just a, a pleasant uh, attitude about uh, their work and about life and about their role in the world. So anyway, I'm probably digging myself into a hole here just talking about all this shit off the cuff. But <laughs> we love our winners. You know, we had you know, I just want to shout out to some of our winners here real quick. In 2019, when we launched the grant, as I said, we gave a thousand bucks to 12 winners. Beth Barovich, Edmund Arvalo, Juliana Bustillo, Taylor Cavello, Maria Delves. Eben Eldridge, Karen Ferrito, Marguerite Calor, Monica Lea Cueva, Tony Louis, Jesse Noguchi, and Rachel O'Donnell. Those were our 2019 winners. And you can read all about them on our website at notrealart.com. So check them out. In 2020, though, we changed it up, as I said, and you know, so boiled it down to, to six winners. And our 2020 winners included Gershon Kramer. Kiara Machado, Paloma Matoya, Jacqueline Venezuela, Tierra Williams, and Miki Yokoyama. And just an incredible group of human beings there. Incredible artists, but just super groovy, wonderful, warm hearted, value driven people who I just like as human beings. And I'm just so grateful to have them as part of the Not Real Art family. And so the 2021 Artist Grant is live now, people. 
So be sure to sign up and meet the April 1st deadline to get your submissions in for the grant. And you, maybe you could be the lucky one to receive the 2021 Not Real Art Artist Grant. Name and claim it. Create your fate. Manifest destiny, people. In other news here at Not Real Art, I want to tell you guys about a new feature on the blog that I think is going to be really cool. I'm super excited about it. And it's called Q and Art. And we've been trying to figure out a cool way to feature and showcase artists on the blog. You know, ideally, we'd love to feature one new artist every day. So that's, you know, what, 365 artists a year, basically. Although we'd probably just do it Monday through Friday. So five times 52, you know, shit, what is that? Uh, uh, 260 or something. But we're going to just start with, you know, one or two a week. And I found this fantastic woman out of uh, the Midwest, artist and writer, uh, has a ton of great experience writing for the arts, about the arts and editing uh, arts publications. And so she and I uh, have been, you know, working to develop this new feature on the blog called Q and Art, Q plus art. And the woman I'm working with on this, Morgan Lawrence, uh, she's super dope, so smart. And she's going to be spearheading this new feature. And basically, you know, ultimately, we're going to feature a new artist every day. But right now, we, we just started this, by the way. Ted Meyer was our first artist feature last week. Be sure to read about Ted. He's awesome. Ted happened to also be one of the artists in our political art show that we helped to curate and produce, Indivisible 2020 which actually was curated by one of our grant winners from 2019, Karen Ferrito. So if you didn't check out the Indivisible show, be sure to check that out. You can just go to indivisible2020.org. Karen Ferrito curated the show. She was one of our past grant winners. But Ted Meyer was also one of the artists that we featured in the show. And we now are featuring him on the blog with this q and art feature. And we're excited about this. I think it's going to be a really cool, fun way to humanize artists, promote artists, tell their stories, help promote their work. And Morgan Lords is going to be a fantastic editor for this. And, you know, if you're lucky, you, maybe you may be one of these artists that we uh, feature uh, on the q and Art showcase uh, at notrealart.com. So definitely check that out. We dropped a new artist uh, today, in fact. You know, it's funny. I haven't even been on the blog today because... You know, I own the joint, so of course I I never go to <laughs> to the website. Anyway, be sure to check it out. Q and Art. You know, maybe maybe we'll even feature you at some point. We worked hard to develop a questionnaire of, that would appeal to you and to artists. Interesting questions that help our readers and other art lovers understand the struggle and the joy of being an artist. And uh, we've got some, you know, some intellectual, philosophical, you know, head scratching questions that may border on the metaphysical. I don't know. Uh, but we certainly have a question or two. They're just, you know, softball, good, fun softball questions, trying to figure out uh, what's more popular, uh, New York uh, pizza or Chicago style pizza. Are you a slice person or are you a pie person? Anyway, so we're trying to have fun with it, not trying to, again, not trying to take ourselves too seriously here, although we've got some real serious questions that we cover uh, on the Q&R art feature. So, you know, be sure to follow that because you're going to learn about some amazing artists from all over the country. We're not trying to be L.A. or New York centric here or London or Miami or Hong Kong. We're, we're you know, being sure to find those artists in the in the quote unquote flyover states that you know, elitist assholes like to talk about, oh, the flyover states. Uh, well, I'm from the flyover states, assholes. I'm from the Midwest, proud Midwest boy here. And so we want to give the love to those artists that live in the heartland, as it were. And so we're just, you know, we just, again, want to feature artists that we admire and respect and dig their work, no matter where they live and where they're from. Because this is not real art, people. And we are your antidote and alternative to the pretentious art world. We try to have a big tent here. We try to love unconditionally to our artist friends. Also in February, just this week, in fact, we dropped uh, a new soul picnic playlist from DJ Constantine, a.k.a. Connie Price. I hope you guys are checking this stuff out. 
DJ Constantine's Connie Price, such a dope producer, DJ, multi instrumentalist, engineer. He's worked with, you know, amazing artists, Big Daddy Kane, Peanut Butter Wolf, just to name a couple. And so we're so honored to have Connie Price, aka DJ Constantine, creating these monthly playlists. And they're not just playlists of music, they're actual history lessons. Because he he writes and gives you you know the story behind the music and and talks about his experience discovering this music and learning it. Definitely, definitely check out the uh, Soul Picnic playlist for February, which just dropped this week, and a lot of great music. And if you haven't checked out the previous ones, definitely do that because you're going to learn some fantastic music and a lot of it's you know retro. It's not the new shit. I mean, this is classic stuff. Okay, this is. The stuff that you better know about. You better know your history, damn it. Not that I know my history. I don't know my history. I mean, I know some history. Uh, but I went to public school, so I don't, you know, I only know what they taught me. It's good to know your history. It's good to know your music history. And uh, DJ Constantine does a great job of of schooling us on the history of these songs and these artists that he talks about. So definitely check it out. I, I know that uh, you will dig it and appreciate it because you know you guys are smart and you are discerning and you appreciate the finer things in life which is of course why you're listening to this it doesn't get much better than not real art and sourdough people love sourdough come on oh yeah the sourdough bread not necessarily me but they you know but hey i'm trying to ride the coattails uh here a bit riding the coattails into your heart all right i'm gonna stop wait what was that fake laughter Oh, no, that was fake applause. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Yeah, aren't I funny? Yeah, anyway. Moving on. Have you guys been listening to the podcast lately? Uh, I hope so. Just yesterday, we dropped a new episode with Scott Bedberry. Scott's a really interesting dude to talk to because he was the head of all of advertising at Nike way back in the day before the Just Do It campaign. In fact, he was the guy that launched the Just Do It campaign with a then young Michael Jordan and Spike Lee and what have you. And so he, you know, had an epic success in advertising there at Nike. And then Scott parlayed that into becoming CMO of Starbucks and was chief marketing officer at Starbucks in the nineties during its, you know, huge growth period. And so now of course, you know, Scott is, you know, he's, he's made his money. So now he's writing books and he's consulting and he's, doing a lot of really cool things, working with really interesting companies like Airbnb. He's even worked with Facebook and what have you. Anyway, he's a great guy. I've known him for a long time and I uh, wanted to have him on the show to talk about stuff. So he came on uh, this week. And so be sure to check out Scott Bedberry, which dropped this week. Last week, we had Jurgen Berkessel, who is a artist and photographer, but he's also the founder of a company called Polymash out of Florida, who I've been working with on our digital content strategy and our podcast marketing, what have you, SEO optimization, best practices, and um, just really have enjoyed working with Jurgen over the last couple of years. But he's also a fantastic photographer and just a great artist and a great human being. So I had him on last week. He was he was great. So check him out. Also, in recent episodes, we we talked to filmmakers Joe Maderos and Justine Michelli Maderos, the filmmakers who made the documentary Mona Lisa is Missing. Did you guys know that the Mona Lisa was stolen from the Louvre? I didn't. Goes back early, early 20th century. What was it like 1911? The Mona Lisa got stolen from the Louvre and it was missing for two years. So this movie takes you through all of that and it's just amazing. I enjoyed it watching it a lot. It's been around it's been out for a while, but I met Joe and Justine through some mutual friends, our our friend uh, Milton Estero, who the former owner and publisher of Art News, uh who was on the podcast, la- you know, a year ago, well over a year ago, a spry young like 92 Milton is, but Milton introduced me to Joe and Justine because he helped them make their movie, Mona Lisa is Missing. So definitely check it out. Check out the podcast, certainly. Uh, another fun fact about Joe was that he 
was the head writer, comedy writer for The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. So, you know, he's a smart, funny guy. You check out the movie Mona Lisa's Missing and check out the podcast. Before that, we had Mary Farmer, who is an encaustic painter from Asheville, North Carolina. And Mary is just a badass because she's, you know, she's also a social justice fighter. I mean, she is a real um, activist when it comes to social justice for women, especially and uh, women's rights and and uh, the right to choose and so on and so forth. And so Mary was on the, the episode to talk about her story and talk a little bit about encaustic painting, which uh, I was not aware of necessarily didn't wasn't appreciative of how kind of complicated the process is. And so we talk about that. So that's a really good episode. And then lastly, four weeks ago, four episodes ago, we had Javi Lopez from Graffiti the City. Graffiti the City. Shout out to Javi. Javi is uh, just a good good friend, fucking great guy. And he's a hustler. This guy is doing some incredible shit, not just in the street, in the world of street apparel with his brand Graffiti the City, which, of course, if you're a graffiti art artist or graffiti fan if you don't have a graffiti the city hat you are not legit man you gotta this is this is standard issue gear for any legit writer out there graffiti the city you better get your hat or your hoodie but also javi has spun off a record label graffiti graffiti the city records or gtc records and he's working with some awesome artists he's working with the super dope female MC who you guys definitely need to check out Dahlia Coronado. So yeah, hopefully you guys are tracking on all this. Cause you know, we work hard to try to bring you groovy content and these people are world-class in their, in their world and in their space and in their industries. And so definitely check all that stuff out. And so anyway, that's, that's just some of the things I wanted to share with you guys in terms of what we're up to, but how long have I even been recording? So far, I have been boring you guys like 40 minutes. Holy shit. This is this is going a lot longer than I would have thought. Maybe I have you on pins and needles because you don't know what I'm going to say next. I could literally say something completely outrageous and poke the bear. And next thing I know, I'm getting canceled. And and uh, that's the end of me, because, of course, we live in this cancel culture. I mean, what do you guys think about this cancel culture, by the way? I personally think it sucks i think it's wrong people have the right to be assholes and they should be called and we also have the right to call them on it but you know i'm sorry i don't think people should be held accountable for shit they did 30 years ago or said 30 years ago stupid as it might be certain of you murdered somebody 30 years ago and we have dna evidence yeah you should pay you should pay you know don't do the crime if you can't do the time but i don't know man this uh i just feel like we've got this hair trigger uh, reaction now to you know if somebody says something slightly off color or insensitive then you know they're just gone they're just canceled and I, I don't know i just makes me uncomfortable maybe because i know that i could be one of those people because i always say stupid shit and i'm just afraid i mean listen where i come from which by the way you know chicago uh, land area um and i lived downtown for a long time i mean you know i come from a pretty diverse group of friends you know, the only way I knew those guys were loving, they loved me was because they busted my balls and busted my chops and said all kinds of questionable and sensitive things. <laughs> and, and that's how I knew they loved me. And I got worried if they stopped busting my balls or busting my chops because, uh, you know, that was, that was just, you know, I know you care if you care enough to bust my chops. All right. So I've got some stories that I want to share across the spectrum here of the creative arts and the creative economy and the world of the arts that we all operate in. Uh, in our backyard here, uh, I don't know if you guys heard, but LACMA, the LA County Museum of Art, must be really struggling financially, in part maybe because they're building that monstrosity of a building over there. But apparently LACMA is selling the director's house for the second time in a year. So Michael Govin, who's the director of LACMA, has to move again for the second time in a year. Check this out. So Michael Govin, who's the director of LACMA, will have to move for the second time in nine months because LACMA is looking to sell his house, which it owns, 
for an asking price of two point four million. Now, Govan apparently lived in another house that was six point six million that the museum listed for sale last year. Uh, and it's saying that uh, apparently Govan will not have to do without the perk entirely as the museum tries to compensate for revenue because, of course, they're losing their ass during the pandemic. So that's interesting. I mean, they have these multi million dollar houses that the director is uh, living in. How do you guys feel about Michael Govan living in a $2.4 million house or $6.6 $6 million house? I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I don't live in a $6.6 $6 million house. You know, artists are struggling. People are struggling. And, you know, we have the director of LACMA living in a multi-million dollar house. Now, I guess the good news is they're downsizing him. I guess he has to pay for himself because this apparently was a perk. So, you know, I don't know what his salary is over there. What do you guys think about that? What do you think about museum directors making a ton of money and living in multi-million dollar houses? Is that is that fair? Is that right? Is that moral? Is that ethical? Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? Things that make you go, hmm, deep thoughts with sourdough. That's what this segment should be called. Are you guys into model making? Well, if you are, apparently... There's a glue that is best for strong bonds. Yeah, did you know? And uh, apparently, there are several glues that you can choose from. I haven't made a model in a long time. My son, though, is getting to be about that age. I'll probably have to start making models again real soon. Were you a big model maker as, as a kid growing up? I mean, I grew up I'm a lot older than most of you guys, so... You know, I grew up in the 70s and the 80s, so you know my model making pretty much was limited to the 70s. But I, I don't know. Maybe I should get back into it now that I know what all these uh, glues are. So, for example, let's see. Number one, Glue Master's Thick Instant Glue is a, apparently a great go-to glue for model making. DevCon Duco Plastic and Model Cement is apparently another good glue for model making. Elmer's Model and Hobby Cement. I mean, come on, Elmer's, you can't... I mean, talk about a classic brand. Model Expo Instant Cure is apparently a good... And by the way, price point on this is like $13.99, which is one of the more expensive ones. I mean, the Glue Master's Thick Instant Glue is $12.99, apparently. So shit ain't cheap. Tester's Plastic Model Cement. Seven twenty four a bottle. Tester's plastic model cement yields seamless and permanent welds. It says. So there you go. So anyway, if you're into uh, model making and you need some glue, uh, those are some brands for you. This is hot news, important news here for your ears at Not Real Art. We only bring you the most critical information and news to improve your lives and arts career. You know, you get it all here at Not Real Art. I've noticed the, the art world, quote unquote, art world has been doubling down on their artists of color and people of color in the arts. And, you know, historically, the art world has been incredibly white. And so now this shift to you know artists of color and uh, talking about people of color in the arts, while it is long overdue. And absolutely time and necessary and essential. It also feels on some level very opportunistic, right? Where were they for the last 30 years? It's not like suddenly black people just discovered the arts. They've been in there from day one. Are you fucking kidding me? So, and I just bring this up because this article here talks about how these black collectors are shaping the future of the art world. And so now we're interested in you know, black collectors who are shaping the art world, which, by the way, I'm so glad that they're talking about this. I'm not I'm not saying they shouldn't talk about it. I'm just saying that it feels a little opportunistic. And that's bullshit, you know, because if you're truly integrated, if you're truly diverse, if you're truly inclusive and you're mixing and mingling with everybody. I got to be careful here. I might get canceled after all. But to be clear, I'm glad that we're talking about this stuff. I am. I just feel like it, some of it's opportunistic. I wish we would have been celebrating 
you know, artists of color, collectors of color, patrons of color, what have you, you know, for the last 30, 40 years. But hey, we are where we are. It's good to be here. I'm glad we're finally, you know, trying to course correct. Now, who are these black collectors? Arthur Lewis, apparently. Well, it's Black History Month. So, you know, there we go. That's that's part of what's driving this. But you know what? Every month should be Black History Month. It's like International Women's Month is March. You know, as far as I'm concerned, every month is Women's Month. You, you don't just need one month. Make it part of our lifestyle and our culture every day, every minute, every week, every month, every year. It's just who we are. It's just how we live. All these, you know, we're, you know, we need, I don't care what your, you know, creed or color is. Like, it takes a village. We need everybody. I'm going to be honest. I, this article is not very clear as to who some of these collectors are. They're talking about artists. Mention some artists. You can Google it. You wait, Google black collectors shaping the future of our world. And you can read this article. Moving. I know I'm going to get canceled. I'm shooting myself in the foot here is what I'm doing right now, people. And you're witnessing the demise of sourdough. All right. There is a new streetwear brand inspired rebrand. So there's a design studio, 20 something. Uh, has created a new identity, brand identity for Ocean Plastic Enterprise 7 Clean Seas or SCS, which resists surf and hippie inspired eco cliches. Anyway, I guess this uh, design studio, 20 something, check them out. But they've created this identity, this new identity for this, this Ocean Plastic Enterprise 7 Clean Seas SCS, which, by the way, it's pretty, pretty dope identity. I, I like it feels pretty fresh i mean there are clearly some influences that i see here i don't know that this identity is completely original but it's differentiating certainly in their in their space i think but what's it say here it says scs was established in 2018 in singapore and now spans five countries attracting thousands of beach cleanup volunteers well that's a great thing so far, over 90,000 kilograms of plastic pollution has been pulled out of the ocean. Of course, that's metrics, kilograms. I don't really know how much that is. Maybe that's because I'm an American. I, I didn't learn metrics. I went to public school. So kilograms, maybe that's not a lot. Um, 90,000 sounds like a lot. So we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. We'll say that 90,000 is a lot. But hey, man, anybody picking up, volunteering to pick up fucking plastic, out of the ocean is a is a is an awesome human being, and uh, we should support them. Maybe they even pay for some of this uh, plastic. So there's like a recycling thing happening here, maybe. But I don't know, man. Something's got to be done. We got to get this plastic out of the ocean. Although I hate these paper straws I'm having to drink out of now. To be honest, you know if that's the price I got to pay, it's the price I got to pay. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but not too long ago, these explorers went down to the to the very bottom, the deepest part of the ocean that we know about they got all the way down to the deepest part of the ocean that we know about and it was an amazing accomplishment right i mean super dangerous really high risk and they get down there and what do they find plastic (laughs) so yeah man figure this shit out i mean you know there's an island you guys probably heard this is an island of plastic bigger than texas floating out in the pacific ocean you guys heard this right Google it. So anyway, shout out to Design Studio 20 something for working with this really impressive company, Seven Clean Seas, to design this new branding. Check them out. It's pretty, pretty cool. The colorway is kind of they're using this like really kind of fluorescent yellow with black. I mean, it works hard. It's pretty strong, definitely impactful. But, you know, it also feels like they could be selling honey. Moving on. Okay, Instagram users, listen to this. Instagram apparently is announcing tougher consequences for hate speech and direct messages. Well, I got to tell my wife this because uh, she's going to have to stop sending me all that hate speech now. I thought she loved me. She says she loves me, but no, no, no. Of course, my wife doesn't DM me hate speech. She just tells me to my face, really. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Instagram announcing tougher consequences for hate speech and direct message. So clean up your act, people. Stop sending hate messages to people on their DMs. The company announced today that it'll start disabling the accounts of people who repeatedly send hate messages, hateful messages. First time offenders won't be able to send messages for an undefined period of time. 
but if they send hateful messages again, their account will be disabled. Oh, man. I, you know, I'm torn. I'm torn up about this stuff. I don't like companies managing what people say. But yet at the same time, I don't want people sending other people hate messages. I'm very conflicted about this. How, what do you guys feel? You know, I mean, I, on one hand, I was thrilled that Twitter banned Trump. But on the other hand, I didn't follow him to begin with. So it didn't really matter. That's the thing. Just don't fucking follow people. If you don't like what they have to say, you know, you know, I'm just as confused as you are. I just, you know, I mean, two things can be true, right? It can be true that it is wrong to send hateful messages as well as it is wrong for companies to control what I can or cannot say. Send me an email. By the way, did you guys know we have an 800 number? We have an 800 number that you guys can call. Leave me messages. I have to look that up. Email me through the website. Tell me what you think about all this stuff. Be good. We can you know, read your responses on the podcast. Tell me what you think about Instagram canceling people for sending hate messages through the DM. Should companies be managing speech? Is it a slippery slope? Should we go there? You know, again, I don't know. I'm just asking the question. So apparently there's a new artificial neural network that transforms text captions into art. That's kind of cool. Appropriately named after the artist Salvador Dali, Pixar's WALL-E, OpenAI's GPT-3 trained Dali as an AI artist trained to generate images from text descriptions using a data set of text image pairs. All right. That sounds really cool, but also sounds really complicated. If you're interested in turning text captions into art, you need to check this out. You need to Google this. Check it out. It's kind of interesting. AI neural network transfers text captions into art. How do you feel about technology? Are, are our lives better? Worse? Is it just a is it is it a is it a wash? I'm grateful I can talk to you guys like this. This is technology working in my favor. I'm working to make me happy. Speaking of podcasts and technology, iHeartMedia announced groundbreaking iHeart 3D audio, innovative new slate of podcasts using by Ariel audio technology, whatever the hell that is. iHeartMedia, the number one podcast publisher globally, according to PodTrack today, announced iHeart 3D audio and its strategic expansion into Binaural podcasting, an innovative new method of producing podcasts that places listeners into the middle of an audio soundscape, immersing them into the story like never before. So it's like stereo surround sound or something. I always love how they take these old technologies and rebrand them and call them new. I don't know. There's probably something new about this, but I don't claim to know what it is. Podcasting has undoubtedly stepped in as one of this year's most relied upon forms of entertainment, said Connell Byrne, president of iHeart Podcast Network. We've seen a huge spike in listenership and iHeart wants to ensure we're meeting this growing audience in new innovative ways, this virtual reality for the years. And by expanding our 3D audio offerings, our goal is to place fans at the center of the stories they love and an even more immersive, innovative format. Well, thank you, Connell. Very sweet of you. They're looking out for us. In technology, Clubhouse. I don't know what you guys are thinking about Clubhouse, but I'll tell you what. If one more person invites me to Clubhouse, I, I'm going to have to club somebody because I understand it's like the hot new thing and there's a lot of good stuff on there and people are loving it. A friend of mine said to me the other day, said, ah, you know, oh man, you got to get not real art on clubhouse, man. You got to be there. Everyone, you know, like it's all happening. It's new. It's cool. And you got to be on there. And, uh, he's like, I, you know, I went down the rabbit hole the other day. I was on there for three hours. It was so cool. I, I heard so much cool stuff. And I just said to him, I said, three hours. I said, I don't have fucking three hours. I don't have three hours to spare. If I, if I suddenly spent three hours going down the clubhouse, uh, rabbit hole, you know, my kids wouldn't get fed and, and my bills wouldn't get paid. I mean, I or I would lose sleep and God knows I, you know, lose enough sleep as it is. It's, it's groovy that they've got another platform. I mean, I, I remember Friendster. I remember, you know, Snapchat. 
You know, I remember, you know, now it's TikTok, now it's Clubhouse. I mean, next week it'll be something else. I mean, I can't keep up with this shit, you know? So I don't know. Maybe maybe you'll find me on Clubhouse at some point. I can just bitch about it there. You know, bitter that I don't have more time to play with new toys like that, you know, to have three hours to just sit around and go down a rabbit hole, man. That seems like luxurious to be able to have that kind of time. What would you do with three hours of time? If somebody just gave you three hours and said, here, here's three hours. You now get 27 hours today. Instead of 24, I'm giving you 27. You get three extra hours today. What would you do with that three hours? Would you sleep? Would you work? Would you cook? Would you read? Would you have sex? Uh, would you uh, go on Clubhouse? You know, I don't know. How would you spend three hours? I probably try to get outside. I probably try to just go for a hike or something. I know I wouldn't spend it on social media. That much I know. Maybe I would just spend it talking to you guys because this is kind of fun. Fun for me, probably not fun for you. But <laughs> hey, what's our last story here? Ah, speaking of podcasting, and there's a new global podcasting conference announced. So for all you podcast lovers and aspiring podcasters and or professional podcasters out there, or amateur podcasters, there is a new global podcasting conference announced called Podcast Day 24. It will be on June 27th and will be hosted in Sydney, London, and North America. Podcastday24.com. Podcastday24, number 24.com. So it's podcast, the word, day, D A Y, number 24.com. Podcastday24.com. I went to a podcast industry conference last February, right before all hell broke loose with the pandemic. And it was pretty cool, man. You know, the culture of the podcasting uh, industry is really groovy. It's really great. A lot of great people, a lot of passionate, interested people uh, who have been doing this for a long time. Of course, big money is now coming into podcasting and, you know, the Spotify's and the iHeart's and the Apple's and, you know, the Mark Cubans uh, of the world are now getting into podcasting. And so, you know, the purists say that it's not the same because, you know, at its core, podcasting is meant to be free and accessible to all. And as soon as you start putting it behind a paywall like Spotify does or, you know, charging for the content that essentially it's uh, not a podcast anymore. So I don't know. I mean, I don't blame anybody for trying to make a buck. You know, change is the only constant. You know, I understand that, you know, we want to keep podcasting, you know, on a certain level, pure to its uh, original you know, proposition. Smoky Mountain's got to blow. I mean, this shit's going to change and it is changing and it's changing in some exciting ways. You know, every day I look at the news, it seems like there's some new podcast uh, tool or podcast platform or podcast to listen to. I mean, it's just exploding with stuff. And so it's exciting, but it's also overwhelming. Maybe this is the conference we were all waiting for to sort out all of our podcasting related problems. All right. I'm going to stop now. And I know you are very happy about that. <laughs> See, I can, I can hear how happy you are. Thank you guys for tuning in and putting up with this weird episode of experimentation. As I tried to read the news, I'm going to be experimenting more with this format and i promise it will get better i promise this is like the first pancake on a camp out right the first pancake of a camp out is never a very good pancake you eat it because you're hungry but it's the second and third pancake that really is gets better so this is the first pancake of this particular little experiment so this didn't suck maybe i'm biased if it did suck you should tell me so that i don't do it again but i don't know i'm going to keep experimenting we're going to go out with coltrane Thank you so much for tuning in and be sure to go to the blog, check out everything happening there, apply for the grant, listen to the podcast, be sure to subscribe and share and make comments on the episodes because all that helps, pleases the algorithm gods and it helps us. So please, please do that. Have a great Valentine's Day, whatever you're up to. Uh, if you're not with the one you love, love the one you're with. And I'll leave you with some train, baby. Thanks again. Ciao for now. Thank you.
Hey there, thanks for tuning in. Please be sure to like this episode, write a review, and share with your friends on social. And if you haven't already done so, please press the subscribe button and follow us on Instagram at Not Real Art World. If you're an artist, be sure to apply for our 2021 artist grant at notrealart.com. Sourdough, out. Thank you.